There's that fabulous museum. It's just really good. Museum. Intinyan. Inti means sun, and yan means path. So it's the path of the sun. Very nice trails here, lots of plants and things to look at. When the king died, his entire family was given a hallucinogenic drug and buried in a tomb like this. And they were given all the things they would need in the afterlife. In this museum, we're making a collection of totem poles or totems. We're trying to get different totem poles from different parts of the world. And we like to put them here together on the equator, right in the middle of the world. We have one from the Easter Island, from the Rapa Nui culture. This went with a gift from Costa Rica, the last 21st of March. We received this huge sphere from Costa Rica. This one is from San Agustin, Colombia. It's called Jaguar, Jaguar of San Agustin. Another one from the United States, Hawaii, Tiki. We have one from Argentina. Another one from Peru. The tallest one is from the coast of Ecuador. We have one from Mexico representing the Toltecs. And the one over here is representing the Quito Cara civilization. Sundial, like the other one, it has two faces. One is in the north, the other one is in the south. From March 21st to September 23rd, I have to make my explanation and decide. But from September 23rd to March 21st, I have to move to the other side. Six months, six months. The other phase, it doesn't work at all. It's totally dark. Remember, that is the cold time for the sun. That is why it's not working. Right now, you can see the time, and it's 11 o'clock. Okay, probably you have five. Five kilos. Okay, well, Elliot and Linda, you are right in the middle of the world. Say hi to your Hello. family. Now we're going to switch sides of the equator here. Sure. There we go. Now he's in the south and Linda is in the north. Very good. The demonstration is about the Coriolis forces. Coriolis, he was a French mathematician scientist who studied the movement of the water and the movement of the wind according with the rotation movement of the earth. So he said when the Earth is rotating, the Earth is producing two forces, the centrifugal forces and the centripetal forces. The centrifugal forces, they burn from the equator and they go to the poles, but the centripetal forces, they come from the poles to the equator. Those forces are producing tornadoes, hurricanes, twisters, typhoons, cyclones, ocean currents. But when those forces, they go to the poles and they come back to the equator, they get null, they cancel each other out. That's why here in my country, we don't have influence of those forces. No tornadoes, no hurricanes, no typhoons. What you can find here? Dull rooms, okay? Wide place. That, you know, here in the ocean, you know, it's no movement. So it's quiet place, no wind. That's why the sailors, they need to use the motors to move, you know, to, through the equator, right? So, in this museum, we have an example. We have a demonstration. And you're going to see that here, the water goes straight down. The water doesn't make any ripple, right? Oh. But I'd like to show you something else. This is the line, this is the equator line, which is crossing through Ecuador, Colombia, Brazil, Gabon, Congo, Republic of Congo, Uganda, Kenya, Somalia, and Indonesia. Those countries, they have the equator as well. But my country is the official middle of the world because we were chosen by the Geodesic Mission in the year 1736. What they were trying to do? They were trying to measure the planet Earth to prove that the Earth is not totally round. So they divided the planet Earth in four parts. All this area has 360 degrees. If we divide it by four, we have 90 right each yeah. point. The first point, zero latitude and zero longitude is in the middle of the ocean. We'll go 90 degrees more, okay, we can find ocean. 90 degrees more, ocean, 90 degrees more, Galapagos Islands. Uh -huh. Galapagos is the only place between of the meridians and in the middle of the boat hemisphere. But they couldn't measure the planet Earth from Galapagos. They came to Quito because they noticed that Quito is the highest point of the equator. We are farther from the center of the Earth and closer to the sun. And that makes here less gravity. If it's less gravity, you are much lighter. Your weight is less, 2.2 pounds less. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I want to keep using. Yes. 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 One kilo, that's right. Yes. Yes. And that's why here, you know, we are the official middle of the world. No Colombia, no Brazil, because it's low. It's in the Amazon basin. No Africa, because it's flat, it's where, where is the equator. And, you know, Malaysia, Indonesia, sea level again. Quito, the highest point. Up here, okay?
Because here the forces they get null, they cancel each other and they go straight down. We need a raw egg, a fresh egg, because all the liquid, and especially the yolk, is going to be set in the bottom of the egg. Ta-da! There we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> time. <laughs> She really took, good. Yeah, it took her about 10 minutes. Yeah, she okay, did it, great. Huh? Very good. You know, if you balance the egg and the nail, you get a diploma. And that diploma says that you are egg masters of the equator. <laughs> if you like, someone else can try the other side. Yes. You feel the bounce. There's current going on. It's hard. It's hard. It's going to balance an egg on a nail. She has a talent. A master's in eggology. Yes. You can. Then let me open it. Okay? Okay, you can get closer to this area. One, two, three. Look at this. Okay, very good. Now your arms like this. I'm going to try to pull down your arms, but you have to keep up harder as you can, okay? I'm going to try to pull down a little bit higher. Okay. Uno, dos, tres. Resist. Resist. Don't let me pull down. Okay, well done. Okay. Now like this. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> I don't know, but I've got a muscle physiologist that's going to get an email from me. This is good. No. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to put your thumbs up, arms out. This is a sobriety test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you have to close your eyes. This is a difficult part of this. Heel to toe, arms out, eyes closed. Okay. I'm going to be here, don't worry about it. I'm going to do this with my eyes closed? Yeah. Ooh. Yes. But I know when you close your eyes, it's difficult. That. You fall clockwise on one side. And, uh, That's right, yes. Thanks. It's hard, don't worry. Yeah, it is hard. Okay. You like because you feel like you're going. Back and That's forth. right. Yeah. Yes, why? Because the forces pull you in one way and in the other yeah, way. And the earth is spinning much faster here, and you can feel the forces. If you are in the north or in the south, you're going to start walking in clockwise or counterclockwise. <laughs> Close your, close your eyes a little. Oh, yeah, he's going to he's going to fall. I saw that drinking you did last night. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard time doing it. <laughs> Give that one a try, Bob. Okay. 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 1875. So it's 138 years old. It's made of bareke. Bareke is composition of mud, volcano stones like Thomas Stone, a straw, chawalquero. Chawalquero is a flower of the agave plant. Cornesta, which is a kind of bamboo, and boniga. Boniga is the excrement from llamas or from cows. The indigenous use the excrement to consolidate the walls. But many of these materials are flexible. So that's why this house is resistant for earthquakes as well as thermic or thermal. You can feel outside is hot, but here is nice, it's fresh, yeah. it's cool. But when outside is cold, inside is going to be warm. Let me show you how to do that. Carlos uh, died at 110 years old. Here's the guinea pig cage. Can you get the sound? Hello. Quee, quee. That's why they call him Quee. Quee, quee. Quee, quee. Okay, here you can see 
the representation of the Amazon Basin. In the Amazon, we have seven ethnic groups, and one of them are the Shuar people. Shuar, S-H-U-A-R. The Shuar, they came very famous because they used to make shrunken heads. Here you can see the process. I know it's not so nice, it's a little bit creepy, but well. <laughs> First, they kill, they kill their enemies. Then, they cut off the head, they chop off the head, and they remove everything out, okay? Brain, bones, teeth, eyes, the skull. And they left just the skin and the hair. Yeah. Then they were boiling the skin in different plants, but the plants nobody knows because it's their secret. But those plants that were helping them to preserve the skin and to shrink it. Next step, they saw up the mouth. They closed the mouth because they thought the spirit is going to escape and is going to take revenge. Next step, hot stones. The stones that were helping them to burn the last fat and to dry the skin. At the end of the process, the guy who was making these, he was wearing the head as a necklace, or he put at the end of his spear to show everyone that he was the winner. And he has his enemy's head as a trophy of war. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, they didn't do it anymore in human beings, but they still practice on monkeys or a sloth, like the one that I have here. Next to this one, you can see a real human head. He was a boy, 12 years old boy, and his reduction was about 150 years ago. Okay. This way, please. This way. 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 This